Hello everyone and welcome to another video on the Brain Cyclopedia channel. In today's video, we will explore how coding or programming is used in the cognitive science fields like psychology and neuroscience. So without further ado, let's begin. There are a number of ways in which the fields of psychology and or cognitive sciences more broadly use coding or programming. But some of the common ways include using it for data analysis and visualization, for computational modeling and model fitting, for designing experiments or the experimental paradigms used in research, and finally for research reproducibility. Let's dive a little further deep into each of these topics and see how coding and programming is used in the cognitive science fields across these four different areas. Coding is commonly used in data analysis and visualization of data of both behavioral data and neuroimaging data for research in cognitive sciences. The entire pipeline of data analysis from pre-processing and cleaning the data and preparing it for analysis for statistical modeling, as well as finally analyzing the data and subjecting it to visualization are all undertaken with programming languages implemented via code. For analyzing behavioral data, such as reaction times or decision choices collected in experimental tasks, we use free open source programming languages like Python and R or paid platforms like MATLAB. For analyzing neuroimaging data, researchers commonly use a range of programming languages supported toolboxes. For instance, for analyzing functional magnetic resonance imaging data or fMRI data, researchers commonly use a software called or a toolbox called statistical parametric mapping an fMRI analysis toolbox supported by and written in MATLAB programming language. For analyzing EEG data, researchers commonly use EEG Lab, another MATLAB supported toolbox. Now, all these programming languages and the toolboxes that they're written in allow us to produce publication standard visualization of the data as well as tables, which means that they follow the APA standard or the American Psychological Association standards of research dissemination. This allows researchers to not only analyze and visualize the data, but create the final plots that they can then put into their research papers. In addition to data analysis and visualization, coding has also commonly been used for computational modeling, simulation, and model fitting. Coding is commonly used in cognitive science fields like computational neuroscience. In this field, programming is a common method used to implement the mathematical and computational models of cognition that the field proposes. Additionally, it is also used to fit the empirical data to proposed computational models to either assess the models or understand the behavior at hand better. Finally, these fields also use simulation studies in which simulated data is created to study a specific research question of interest. Simulation studies could implement code that can either simulate uh, neural or behavioral data. These simulation studies help in building theory in these particular fields. The most Common programming languages used for computational modeling, model fitting, or simulation studies in these fields include Python and MATLAB. But in the recent times, some researchers have started using R programming language for things such as simulation studies. The next most common use of coding in cognitive sciences is coding or programming experimental tasks that are used in the research studies. All subfields of cognitive sciences such as experimental psychology, cognitive psychology, neuroscience, cognitive neuroscience, etc. all use experimental tasks like the stop trial or the stop signal task, the Stroop task, flanker task, and back task, and so on. All aspects of the task that are used in designing the task, such as the number of trials, the stimulus used or the way it is presented, the experimental manipulation of the stimulus, and presenting aspects such as the task instructions, etc., can be coded using specific languages and toolboxes. 
this is got to be one of the most common use of programming other than data analysis in cognitive sciences because presenting a task is also the most common thing that happens in most of these fields. These tasks are commonly programmed using a wide range of toolboxes which are written in or supported by various programming languages. Now, although these toolboxes do not always require you to implement code or write code, it is better to have some knowledge of the code in cases where you need to do something more complex than what the toolbox provides you with. Some common examples include Psych Toolbox, which is written in and supported by MATLAB, and the uh, PsychoPy, which is written in and supported by Python. In addition to helping us build or implement the tasks that need to be used in experimental lab settings, coding can also be used to build online experiments, a common pathway that cognitive science researchers are nowadays implementing. Online experiments require the participant to take part in the task from a non-lab setting, which could be at the comfort of their own home, wherein the experimenter provides the participant with a link where they can access the task. They can then sit on a computer at their home and then take part in the task. We can program these kinds of tasks with the help of toolboxes like JS Psych. Now, an online experiment is often designed in the format of a website or an interactive website. So thus, JS Psych renders from other languages like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and helps us build such online experiments, which can then be shared with the participants and we can collect data. Online experiments are nowadays one of the highest used platforms for collecting data. Finally, with the use and rise of coding and programming in the field of cognitive sciences like psychology, it has aided all the researchers to walk towards open science practices in the terms of research reproducibility. Over the last few decades, with the rise in replication crisis, which essentially means that researchers were unable to replicate other researchers' results, there has been a rise in the call for open sciences and reproducibility requirements. In order to increase the transparency of the research process, all the researchers usually are encouraged in the fields of cognitive sciences to share their code. So thus, when you write code, you can share this code with other fellow researchers in the field and increase the transparency, integrity, and quality of the research. Some of the common platforms where this can be done includes Open Science Framework, or the OSF, and GitHub repositories. Now, in this last point, we realize that you're not directly writing code. But in this particular point, we see that writing code in other aspects, such as data analysis or building a task, can essentially help us because we account for the specifics that we have undertaken while making an analysis or while developing a task or a model, which can then be shared with the greater community with the idea of increasing reproducibility of the research that is being disseminated. Thus, the quality of the science created by cognitive sciences have the chance of being better and more improved. All right, that is the end of today's video. If you haven't already, subscribe to Brain Cyclopedia, leave a like, share this video with someone you think will benefit from today's content, and comment below to leave your suggestions, requests, or your thoughts about today's video. Press the bell icon to remain updated with all our new uploads. Follow us on all of our social media sites and consider subscribing to the Brain Cyclopedia official channel on the buymeacoffee.com page of the channel. Send us a donation if you think our channel has been helpful to you. We'll see you in our next video.